Good morning, friends. Happy Monday. I hope all of you are healthy and well today. Welcome to all of you over here on YouTube and Instagram. Thanks for joining me live today for our Natural Health News Show. This is now officially we're starting our eighth week of coming to you live. It's pretty crazy that we've been going at this so strong. So welcome to all of you joining today. I really want to address a lot of concerns, frustrations, fears about what 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 does reopening look like? What do you need to have in your arsenal of resources? And I'm going to share with you basically kind of a toolbox, a toolkit, if you will, of uh, eight categories of items uh, that you want to consider, have, start to order, um, and we'll dig into that. But today I have a lot, a lot of news. So welcome all of you new joining. I'm very excited to start off from Monday this morning. It was a little hectic. The internet went down about 40 minutes ago. So I had a little meltdown, but we're back and we're live. So um, welcome to all of you tuning in. Let me know where you're tuning in from because I have a lot of international news uh, to report today. So let's just kick off right on into our numbers. Friends, globally, we are going to hit 3 million cases probably this evening. Um, in the US, we'll probably hit a million this evening. So the U.S. is a third of the global caseload right now. And despite the fact that we have no testing or minimal testing, um, so that is that is problematic. Uh, let me turn my lights off. Okay, so I'm getting a little shine. Um, so that is that's definitely a problem. One of the things that we are seeing, and I want to report active, recovered, and then the fatalities here in the U.S., so right now we have 821,000 active cases, 25, almost 26,000 have fully recovered. So they went from testing positive to testing negative, and they're either out of the hospital or are okay at home. Recover, um, oh, sorry, my bad. I said that wrong. We have 821,000 who are active. That is increased by almost 26,000 in a day. So that was my bad. Recovered 109,311 have recovered. So we have 109,000 that are have tested um, positive and now they've tested negative twice. Um, so they are showcasing they're okay. By the way, YouTube, if we get kind of stalled, it's probably our internet challenges here today. Um, fatalities were over 55,000 and that's up 1,256 in a day. Um, New York is inching closer to 300,000. They're at 288 now. Uh, New Jersey's at 109. Massachusetts is up to 53,000. And I want to highlight this. Uh, Massachusetts has really had an increase um, and they have certain big epicenters. And one of the things that was highlighted over the weekend, Sunday's Boston Globe, the obituary section was 21 pages long. Uh, that is significant. Um, and then we also have California, Pennsylvania at 41,000, um, and um, we have Michigan at 37, Florida, I'm keeping tabs on them at 31,000. One of the things that's really interesting, like for instance, oh, futuristic, thank you for the super chat. Um, one of the things that I think is very interesting is that Georgia, for instance, is, is opening. So Friday, we opened for um, hair, nails, spas, uh, bowling alleys, movie theaters, and tattoo parlors. Today, restaurants are open. And I've seen some of our restaurants that we frequent. I've gotten emails saying the outdoor seating is open. drive throughs are still, you know, pickup are still available. Um, here's the challenge. And, and this is kind of an interesting number. Like the number right now where Georgia is, we're in the 20s, uh, 20,000 cases. The number of Georgia is the same number that the U.S. actually more than what the U.S. had, and we are showcasing uh, an opening when we're having an incline. The U.S. shut down, and we went into full kind of uh, quarantine, stay-at-home orders for quantity less than what Georgia has, and Georgia is reopening. So it just puts things in perspective. It's pretty insane. Um, futuristic, thank you again for another super chat. Three dollars. I appreciate that. These um, shows are, are a labor of love. So I appreciate that. 
Um, one of the things that was notated over the weekend, Dr. Burks, who is on the um, task force, the uh, coronavirus task force, she um, had expressed that social distancing, where is that now, will continue through to possibly the end of summer. It puts up in, in the air a lot of uh, question mark about schooling and what are we going to do with kids and colleges. Um, I've mentioned several times already, there's a major issue with the food supply, um, specifically in the meat and, you know, the meat packing industries are, are taking a big hit like Tyson Foods, for instance, they are um, saying that millions of pounds of their meat products are disappearing. And the challenge here is that we have populations who need food. We have <clears throat> vendors who have an abundance of food to be processed. So pigs, beef, and chickens, they're supposedly going to be euthanizing all these animals, which is heartbreaking. And it's heartbreaking because the, um, the lack of social distancing and the, the inability to keep uh, the virus out of these, these industries, we're seeing that meltdown. So if you are a vegan vegetarian, like we mostly lean towards, um, you know, this won't have necessarily that big of an impact, you know, rice, beans and quinoa, farro and all your vegetables. And like us, we're going to start growing our vegetables this week, this summer. Um, but if you are like how I grew up, my, my dad, um, and parents, uh, oh, Paolo, thank you, um, for another $5 super chat. Appreciate it. <clears throat> um, you know, we had meat on the table every day and it will, it will hit communities and restaurants in, in a very challenging way. So we'll see ramifications of this long term. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, another thing I want to highlight, um, we saw a couple, a New York uh, couple, both of them had tested positive in, in March, March 19th. Um, they, thought they recovered. They went to donate blood to help with the antibodies and they just, they got a call back. So they donated blood April 10th. They got a call back last week saying that they came back, their test came back positive for the virus. That might be some of the shedding. We know it's about 50 to 70 days of viral shed. So they may be past the symptoms of it and they might be past contagiousness, but they still were testing positive. Um, and that's going to be a challenge too, as we start to reopen. And that's why today's topic, I have an arsenal of stuff over here that I want to highlight. Um, I do also want to highlight up in Maryland, Prince, I don't know if we have anybody in Maryland on the feeds, comment below if you are, but Prince George County is one of the hardest hit counties in the North and on, on the Northern coast. Actually, it's not even Northern coast. It's on, it's in the whole entire U S but this County particularly is an affluent um, community of African Americans. The the black population, um, they're saying this community, their um, healthcare facilities are overwhelmed. Where just you know a few miles uh, close to D.C. or close to them, just a few miles is Alexandria, and those hospitals have no sort of um, overload of COVID cases. And, and they're showcasing that part of this are underlying health conditions. Um, and just the mortality rate is so much greater in that particular county. So um, I think there's going to be more in terms of contact tracing in terms of what that that involves, but um, we're going to monitor that you'll probably hear a lot more about that. That's kind of hit the waves yesterday. Okay, I want to talk about um, also, the jails. I've been reporting about outbreaks in jails. We saw this in California. We saw this in Ohio. I highlighted the other day they were doing testing even just on asymptomatic, you know, non, not asymptomatic cases, and they were showing, you know, a high volume, high percentage were asymptomatic but tested positive. So the ACLU has put out a modeling for the jails and their recommendation to lower the COVID risk is to lower the jail population. You know, there's much more to that, but that is something that is, is um, being discussed. Uh, now I wanna look at some international news because this will have some ramica ramifications on us as we get back to reopening. So first of all, I wanna highlight a kind of interesting <laughs> journey that several, a couple, you know, a dozen teenagers um, had. So. In March, there were Dutch teens that were um, 
I guess they were doing some uh, sailing excursion um, in St. Lucia. So they're in the Caribbean and um, there were 25 of them and 12 crew members. And when it became really clear that they couldn't even sail to Cuba to get back home, um, they decided to load up their boat. It's like, and it's a small, like a 25 foot schooner. And it's, that's old school, like wooden boats. Um, they loaded up 400 pounds of veggies and a whole bunch of gear, you know, for inter- inclement, inclement weather. And they set, set sail. They sailed home 4,500 nautical miles from St. Lucia to their home. It was a total of 25 teenagers and 12 crew members. Is that crazy? And one of them described it like an adventure he thought he didn't sign up for, but was pretty darn cool. So kind of kind of interesting. But you know, talk about the fortitude of kids wanting to get home, um, and they braved the Great Atlantic to get home. Pretty phenomenal. And that was in the middle of March. So um, you know, we're talking at least six weeks, seven weeks. Um, okay, so that's kind of a, a, a cutesy story. But I want to really dig into what's going on. Europe is looking at reopening. So, and this will also play into how we look at reopening and what all will be expected, potentially mandated for us. Um, Italy and France are starting to uh, assess reopening plans. They're not reopening immediately, um, not like Georgia. They're being very strategic. But already looking at how do they slowly do this? There's going to be a significant economic toll um, that's being assessed as they reopen. France, I do know there are reports that they are looking at um, bringing back in the individuals who are working on Notre Dame, you know, with the fire um, last summer. I think it was last summer. It seems like it's so long ago, but um, that, you know, France is definitely in that focus. Germany is also, as you guys know, I was planning on doing Germany this summer. Um, Journey, Germany across the country is making face mask wearing man, mandatory. Now, certain populate or certain cities like Berlin versus Munich have very different guidelines in terms of how are they mandating that. Um, but the violations are varying based on the cities. Um, so it might be okay in Berlin to... Um, you know, you might kind of get a slap on your wrist if you don't wear a face mask. Whereas in Munich, you might be hauled to jail or you might get a, a civil uh, citation. So um, that is something I, I, that we're, we'll talk a little bit about today. Um, Britain is um, it's crazy, you know, with all of their lockdown, they're still in lockdown mode. <clears throat> they have seen the cases of domestic abuse increase by 40 percent. Um and they've had a, a huge increase in, in calls about domestic abuse because of the lockdown. That might actually be a, in existence here in the U.S. I'm just not sure people are making 911 calls, given my report from yesterday about how people are very nervous about calling 911 and being exposed in an ambulance ride or even in the hospital. Um, now, the other thing, Australia, and this, again, this could have an effect on us. Australia... Um, So today is Monday. So today in Australia, they launched a, um, they released a tracing app on the phone. So it's Bluetooth and it's uh, methodology and it's a tracing app and 1 million people downloaded this tracing app. And basically it, it sets on your phone a way to kind of know who all you interface with. So similar to like the hotspots, your phone will record everybody you've come into uh, any type of close proximity of 4.9 feet or less. I don't know why 0.9, but 4.9. So it records that. And if for whatever reason, from the time you start using the app, you've come into contact with anybody in that 4.9 feet or less space for more than 15 minutes in time frame, and that person at some point in the future records they're a positive, you get a notification, you get an app alert saying you came into, into contact with somebody who um, has tested positive and, and, and the directions I wasn't really clear on. I have to actually log in and see. I don't know if I'm able to do that. Um, but the, the application, the impact here um, is very interesting because they're going to use digital um, methodologies for contact tracing. 
And what that means is that we might actually have a better ability to, to trace our, you know, our contacts. So let's say you're at Trader Joe's, for instance, like I am jonesing for Trader Joe's. I'm very upset that this company hasn't figured out how to either deliver to my trunk or um, for me to have delivery go there. So we haven't had any Trader Joe's trips, but there will be a point where I want to go to Trader Joe's. Joe. If I were to go in there, I might engage with people in, you know, less than five feet space. I might not know who they are. And if they test positive and I don't know who they are, I wouldn't know the sphere of contact unless it were from a phone. So that that's really telling, even though the folks in Australia uh, were nervous about that. So there was a lot of backlash about, uh, like Kim saying, that's a little too much big brother watching for me. The, the here's the thing, they're already watching. If you use a phone or you have Alexa, there's connectivity whether you like it or not. Same with Facebook. We've seen that. So, you know, if you are on those formats, which by the way, any of you on Instagram, that is a um sorry, my allergies are bothering me. Um that that's already in existence. So, you know, just know that you've come to terms with that and accepted that as a user. And so this is nothing different. This is just more for health uh, monitoring. I'm not going to disagree with, you know, people's opinions. I have my own on that. Um, but this is something that might come our way. And there are even reports in other countries where, you know, they're using drones to do heat scanning. Police are going to have, you know, thermal scanning um, tools, you know, and in, in their, you know, glasses and stuff like that. So there's definitely a, a, a lean internationally, you know, given our delay of response, who knows what's, what's going to happen and how that may or may not roll out here. But it's something I wanted to highlight for you. I don't think we're going to hear a lot about that probably in the national news, but it's very, very important for, um, for us to really kind of tune in and consider that this all might be coming our way. Um, the real Charlie Orange, how does the app know they are positive? So the person, there's some sort of connectivity to the person. And I don't think it's a voluntary action. Like the app is scanned by the health department. So there's there's less than like, oh, I don't feel like telling everybody. It, it is, it's not an onus or responsibility of the person. It is connected into the testing methodology. So that's that bridges that gap. Um, I'm very concerned of nano tracking and viruses. Yeah, I miss Trader Joe's and Aldi for nearly six years. Oh my gosh, Christine. Ugh, I don't think I can handle six years. Six weeks is crazy. And I even had our Aldi. I did do a quick little Aldi shop because there was something I really wanted. And I think, and I've had some friends who've actually gone to Target in other states. Um, I think some of these stores are not putting out some of the like the Aldi find, finds that I wanted. They were not there. And I think stores are kind of minimizing what shopping kind of stuff they're putting out. And they're only kind of carrying the essentials, which it makes sense because that's what we should be shopping for. I'll admit I did an Aldi find. I'll, I, I will say the one Aldi find that did work out for us was um, the EB, the essential worker Easter Bunny got the, um, I have to whisper because he can hear me upstairs, but the, um, hamster that we caught, oh my gosh, he, oh, that's seriously one of the best pies that I didn't even make. Um, okay. Uh, so Joanne says, I hate it. They are so watching us. You want to put tape all over the little camera things. I actually do that. I will tell you that I was involved in, gosh, this is before we left. Um, this is before we left Tampa, but I was involved in something where literally my cameras would turn on and it was, uh, um, it was really, eerie. and so I always, you know, I, I always have my post-it notes. And in fact, I'll show you guys the cute one. This is my little cute one. This is my new post-it note I got. Um, but I just put that, I put that right over like my, you can't see it because I use a different camera, but notice I don't use that camera. I use one I plug in and plug out. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It, you know, we definitely are. Um, okay. So Kim, yeah, Trader Joe's is limiting. Okay. So now with that being said, what does it mean? And what is it going to look like for us who are leery, a little nervous, a little distrusting, or just, you know, lacking trust in others to be safe? 
what do we do and how do we arm and equip ourselves with resources and how do we keep ourselves healthy, safe, sane, and make sure that um, we take the responsibility for our own health? Because the reality with our current state, states like Georgia, they're not putting our health first. They're putting stupid economics first. And I'm all for economics. I run a business in this space but I'm not opening up my physical clinic. And none of my friends who are in this space, even the clinic owner who runs the space that I operate out of, he's not opening. My friends in, in physical therapy, not opening. This is just so, the rollout is not perfect. And none of them will be, but this is way too premature. Um, so with that being said, there may be states that roll out a little bit better. Um, and so what can you do? What can, can you have at home? What can you take with you and what do you need in your home, at your work, in your car, in your classrooms? Because we are at some point going to go back to normal, normal, a new normal life, okay? The next two to three years might be involved. Like we might have a lot of this stuff and have to have it always with us for the next two or three years. And the likelihood of another type of coronavirus coming out is very high if we don't see China close down these wet markets, which is where the major points of transfer occur. So let's talk about what I'm calling my COVID safety toolbox. And for some reason, I'm not getting dinged like I, I expected on YouTube. So I don't know. The guys kept reviewing. We're like, we're just sick and tired of watching these really long live shows. So at any rate, I'm okay saying that. Um, and I just want to review a lot of this I've already talked about. I'm just going to put it together. Um, more than likely, what I'll do is I will edit out some of this and put it in a package video um, if I can muster up that mental strength and energy and time to, to edit. Editing takes forever. Um, but I'm also going to have a free digital download. It's not available yet, but it will be there. So let's talk about our eight items to have in your toolbox. Number one, is what I highlighted the other day, the pulse ox. It's a pulse oximeter. It is a way to measure your oxygen levels by, oops, by putting your finger in a little, it's like a little kind of a paper clip, if you were, if you will, you know, like a little thing. And it'll measure your oxygen levels. And, and it's kind of reading mine, but the measurement will tell you how well your oxygen levels are. This is a big factor because anything in the low 90s and definitely below 90 is in an emergent state. Um, you know, that would be if you have, here we go. So I have uh, 99, my pulse is 100 because I was freaking out about my internet and I'm talking a lot. But the um, this pulse oximeter is an excellent tool, especially with the nature of the respiratory challenges. Now, not everybody has pneumonia. Not everybody's going to have the bronchial major lung congestion, but a lot of people do have it and they don't even realize how bad it is because the pulse ox, for some reason, in the virus, when it hits the lungs, people can register 20 on this. They can register 20 and still be scrolling on their Facebook feeds and talking normally very abnormal. And that's why a lot of the ICU ER docs have categorized this more the lung related condition and how they're addressing it is treating it more like altitude illness, altitude sickness. So that's one. Second thing are face masks. So you guys know, huge fan of face masks. I've been highlighting them. This is, these are face masks that my friend Sarah makes. I know that a lot of vendors I posted have gotten so overloaded that they are unable to meet the needs Sarah's still making them every day and is shipping them out every day. So she has double cloth and I'm excited to share with you the inserts. So I will be posting these. I ordered way too many. So I'll be posting these. I'll be selling the individual inserts, but this is a five carbon layer filter. And this is the beauty of this type of mask. This has been this type of mask. That's a thicker material, two layers, it has an adjustable nose piece and you get the insert. So she has a little area where you can insert this filter. You insert the five layer carbon filter and now you're really cranking 
with a very protective layer for you. So there was a hospital, I want to say it was in Nebraska. They actually did a test of all these masks that they got from volunteers that sent in for their healthcare professionals. They found that the ones that were like Sarah's, two layers, thicker material, and actually had the ties. The ties are the best in terms of adjustable. You can get a really good tight cinching on it. And so you can really be more um, adept at, at closing down any pockets. So you can really seal this pretty well. They said that the, just the two layer pockets were better and more protective, protective than a surgical mask. Now you insert a, a five layer carbon filter like I just did, and I'll show you. Um, they have the kids versions too. So we have kids ones, and then we have these. So I totally messed up on my ordering and uh, have way more than what we will use. So I will post those post those up on our website and you can grab, uh, you know, uh, several for yourselves. So they, they actually have, um, there's a lot of good readings about these masks and they're very protective. So when you're out and about, you just don't want just your cotton mask. And I'll show you some other ones that finally came in. This is another type of mask. This is, I wash them and this has the ability to adjust here in the back. It's not nearly as tight as, as I can get Sarah's. There's gaping here. This is a little too loose. It does have this ability to pinch down. But also, this is very, um, very hard. It's very hard to talk in. Like, when I breathe in, when it gets me kind of congested, partially because of the allergies. We were out all day yesterday spreading mulch. And this, this is the children's one. This is the one I have for Gabriel. So. How cute is that? And actually the children's one fits better. Like I feel like I get a better, this is again for kids. So my face is not a kid's face, but that gives you an idea. See, it has cars on it. How cute is that? And it's got this little air, uh, air piece, but you can put an air filter in it for, for kids too. So there are a lot of masks out there. You just want to kind of be cognizant of what you're buying. And this, when you can tie it, this is the most effective. Um, cause you can, you can get a tighter, you can position it in all different ways there and I tighten it and then you tighten it from the bottom. Very, very powerful. So a mask is going to be one thing. Now gloves is a big question mark because there's a lot of talk about cross contamination with gloves. Um, and so I think it's not a bad idea to wear gloves. Um, they tend to be hard to find. Um, I, I will tell you, I didn't bring them in, but my trick is to, you can still get these at pretty much every store. You can even get them online. Are the gloves where they are the rubber, you know, washing dishes gloves. And we've given those out to a lot of our workers that are delivering um, boxes and then our ro rotation of mail carriers. And that is something to consider. You can take them off. You can sanitize and clean those as well. But I want to share with you a, a, a vendor, a new vendor. This is totally not sponsored, but this is a new find I'm really excited about. This is soap and water wipes. So we know sanitizer, you know, versus soap and water, way better soap and water. So this is called Hansies, and these are soap and water wipes. It's free of dyes, perfumes, alcohol, and parabens. And it has uh, rosemary, tea tree, olive, fruit extract, coconut oil, sunflower, shea butter. It has um, the main base is Castile soap. So I wash my face and uh, my body with Castile soap. So this little pad, allow, it's hard to see, but it kind of gets it soaked up. You see the bubbles? So you can have these in your car, in your purse. And this is going to clean your hands better than your, you can get under your nails. That's a big spot you want to focus on. This is going to clean your, your hands better than a sanitizer. You can then follow up with a sanitizer as a double two layer approach. But these handsies, I will say, I got this on Amazon. I found them on Amazon. I ordered them on Amazon. It took a little bit of time. Just know friends, even with the pulse oximeters, Sometimes they will say a delay in, in the shipping. I've had some move up even two or three weeks. 
So, you know, just be really patient. But this, I think, is going to be good. This, I got a hundred of these bad boys. So I'm going to pick some winners. I'm going to send you a sampling for you to test out. So watch through to the end of the video and I'll call whoever's live on the show. We'll call your name and, um, and get your address and send these out. But it smells, you know, not anything crazy. There is a, an, an orange one I've linked to, um, but super fantastic. So I think this is very powerful. Um, and as far as, you know, cleaning the mask, the good thing is like this is something that you can wash. So washing, cleansing, and, you know, washing your clothing, washing, you know, your hair after you've been out is going to be key. But you can wash these. Um, I do know that, um, you know, there are like UV sanitizers for your phones and even your sunglasses. Um, you know, those, again, are for materials, not skin and certainly not mucous membranes. Um, so, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so grab that link down below. That's over on Amazon. Considering this is a way to wash your hands, you know, 100 of these, I think it's like 44, 45 dollars. That's not bad. And I mean, it's a lot like it's a lot. And I will be posting these outside as well for our mail carrier and our delivery crew. So I'll make sure that we give these out. Um, OK, so. Yeah, okay, so that's where we're at with that. The second thing, and I had hoped to print it, but I want you to grab my antiviral checklist. So this is a free download for all of you. DM me over on Instagram, and I can link to that down below. Um, and any of you who watch on the replay, particularly on Instagram, the live replay is linked down there. This will probably have two parts. Um, but on the bio link, um, in my, on my Instagram feed, I'll link to today's video so you can get in and the description for all of you on YouTube, that description has all of these links as well as the free antiviral checklist. That antiviral checklist has really a lot of my immune boosters. So immune boosting is going to be critical. There are some that I consider to be the top ones that have a lot of, uh, they have a proven track record in the world of the coronaviruses. Now, nothing has been proven in this category, medically and in the natural healing world. So I'm not making any claims. Um, companies who do make claims, the FDA is clamping down on. So I'm not making any claims, you know, on the behalf of any of these companies. But I do know immune wise, any folks that want to boost, support, regulate, monitor and manage their immune system, their immune health, my checklist will give you all of those items that will be helpful as well as other details. Um, and I might be updating that also um, as we look at reopening. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you guys have seen my shirt. It's a peace, love, sanitized day. This is a tank uh, that you can grab and Etsy owner put this on a tank for me. So if you want this same tank, um, she's got that and you can message her. Super, super sweet. Now, fourth, um, on my checklist is we have to manage our stress. This is very stress inducing. I've talked a lot in the last few days about stress, so I won't bore you all, but I have a lot of links down below, you know, supporting our adrenals, supporting our um, healthy um, stress management using, you know, the Bach flower remedies and um, some good, you know, stress teas like kava, you know, stress relieving teas like kava, rhodiola, holy basil, those are all powerful. Um, so I'm, I'm putting that out there, but definitely between the antiviral checklist and probably three or four videos in the last week, you'll be able to really choose, pick and choose some of the, um, strong stress supportive supplementation just to support your body. Now, number five is sleep. We need to make sure sleep is restorative. Sleep boosts our immune system and it keeps us balanced. And one of the things that, um, we need to manage is to make sure we continue to sleep well. And if we aren't, we get sleeping better. Um, and then as we go back to normal life, that might alter our sleep schedule. So I've recommended quite often the REM sleep. It's a gel packet. And I'm trying to see if I've got my little box around here. I rotate stuff. Oh, here it is. This is my little box. So, so the REM sleep, this is the box. This is a 10 day supply. They send you these little gel packets. Um, you can sign up where you get a 30 day supply, but it's very, very healthy in terms of supporting all the layers of REM sleep. That's why it's called REM, but it has botanicals. It has, um, 
uh, neurochemical balancers as well. And then it has just a little dose of melatonin, but it has 5-HTP. It has um, GABA and it has amino acids like L-theanine and tryptophan. And then it has magnolia bark and hops, which also addresses stress. So this will help you stay asleep longer. Uh, it also will help manage if you're waking up, if you're having hot flashes. So sleep is really, really key. Sleep, resting, napping as well. Very, very good. Um, Lori says, I made your mommy cookies yesterday and ate a ton. Yay, great for stress. Oh my gosh. So my mommy cookies, those are huge. Love, love, love those. And I had in magnesium, I you know, I added a little magnesium yesterday for us. Um, so, so good. Um Pam, uh, it's great. Good morning. So thankful for all the info you give us each morning. So nice to see your uplifting spirit. Yay. Thank you. Um, now, number six, um, I have listed some of my favorite. If we want to really kind of dig into additional immune support, um, Moringa is one of my favorites for that. I talked a little bit about that in one of our, our morning shows. Um, mushroom blends. Like I love the Gaia Herbs Immune Shine. If you are familiar with this, this is something, um, Lori, that you could add to mommy cookies. You could add this to a smoothie, like my green smoothie in the other day. But this just has mataki, chaga, elderberry, ginger, really powerful immune supportive herbs in that. Um, so that's powerful. And then also my favorite three letter herbal botanical. Love that. So if you guys want to grab, you know, they now have fish oil capsules that are liposomal, so they get integrated. Very, very impact. The impact is is significant. It gets integrated in the right methodology so that all your receptors to the three letter botanical are invigorated. We see very powerful immune regulating and immune modulating enhancements with my favorite botanical, and that is powerful for any of you who have any type of autoimmunity. This is where these moringa the mushroom blends and my three letter botanical, very powerful. There's a 20% discount code um, over at Octagon Biolabs if you wanna grab that in the description box below. Number seven, I talk a lot about this. You guys are familiar, I'm a lymphatic therapist. That's one of my main specialties with women and men who come into my clinical practice to see me in person. Lymph motivation is critical. So moving by using, um, a dry skin body brush. I have a free guide on that. I have a whole playlist. I have about 50 videos on a playlist, lots of DIY videos. I have rebounding videos, how to dry skin brush your body. If you have cancer or have had cancer, how do you move around post-surgical sites? I have all of that. But managing your lymphatics also requires using things like homeopathics, like my one brand, um, professional formulas, makes this one product that is magical for anybody who has any type of fluid retention, swelling, edema, or lymphedema. It's called Lymph Stim. So I put that in the catalog of, of lymph promotion because it does move our lymphatics. And we want our lymphatics, part of it's a, de a detox garbage disposal system. The other is delivery method for our immune uh, cells. So it's a transport uh, channel for invigorating our immune um, system and also those little lymph nodes when they get fired up they're all throughout the body we want our lymph working well and so that we don't have any clogging or dysfunction of the lymphatic system so that's one thing and then the other last and final is let's talk about house what do you have in your house at your school or in your office that can help support cleaning the air keeping your bodies healthy while also minimizing toxic chemical exposure. Um, I love using force of nature inside the home. So I have a link down below. This is a natural disinfectant. Um, it uses water. It uses little packets that have vinegar and salt. And this comes with an electrolyzer that literally converts all of that in a really fast way into a powerful um, EPA approved cleaning agent for coronavirus. Now, is novel coronavirus in that category? It's not listed and they're not, you know, they would be dinged quite a bit, but it's very powerful. So we use this inside every surface. We use this even on our shoes. You can use this on pets, you know, like our dogs sometimes interface with our neighbors that are throwing the ball. 
like our flat coat is obsessed with the ball and she'll just chuck it over one of her neighbor's fences and then just stare or bark at them to throw her the ball and then they come and love on her. And so we want to make sure that her paws are clean. This is safe to use on their paws. It's safe with babies. This is fantastic. And so this is a good alternative. The other thing too is, you know, the Clorox wipes and Lysol sprays and all of those items, those are still off the shelves and very hard to find. So making sure that you continue to keep up your cleaning process at home is, is powerful. Um, now, the other thing too is an UV air filtration system. I have a UV air filtration video I will be posting this week. And there are units that you can buy that they're a little bit of on the expensive side of air filters, but they're high quality and they have UV bulbs that will literally kill microbes, pathogens, viruses. It eradicates junky gunkiness in the air. The air, it's like an ozone smell that comes out of the air filter. And we have noticed a big difference. Now I'm running this all the time. I have two being run downstairs in our main living room. We have three dogs, a toddler, and two adults. There's a lot of stuff that's floating in the air. And it is very powerful. UV air filtration is very, very powerful at cleaning the air. It would be something I would have in a quarantine room. Um, so that's something you can have and run. Um, there are different units. There are smaller units, or at least, you know, I've seen the little pop-up like UV ones. I don't know how effective they are with cleaning the air. I have to see reports on those. But I do know the air filtration unit the way they kind of suck the air down, it goes through this one layer filter and there's about a space this much where these bulbs, like at night, you can see the bulbs, they radiate. Um, they're, they're on and they are killing that air inside that space. So there's a time frame that microbes and pathogens are being killed. So very powerful salt lamps. Okay, I brought mine here. Usually I have it on, but I'm going to show you my favorite salt lamp. These are really heavy. Um, I happen to find this at Aldi. Um, I think I grabbed like three of them, but I've had these, they are always in supply in our house. And it's basically a chunk of a Himalayan sea salt. And there's a little light attachment, a light bulb inside. And this little, uh, little connection that allows us to dim it. So it's got a little dimmer switch. Some just turn on and off. Some I have just, they're on or they're off. This is great because we set this up in Gabriel's room and I put it in my office. A salt lamp produces negative ions and negative ions are very powerful at eradicating and eliminating um, certain pathogens. And I do feel like anyway, especially with anybody who has lung, comp you know, lung challenges, asthma, emphysema, COPD, or even if you're at home dealing with the lung uh, impact of the virus. Having cleaner air is healthier for you. Um, and so cleaning your air and having salt lamps and UV filters just ensures you have cleaner air. And the one thing, you know, to make sure like we have one of these, we moved in, they had a you know, hospital grade HEPA unit outside. We only get that filter change once a year. That's the contract terms. But we use these as ways to additionally filter and clean our air. And I just don't rely on one. Um, I, so Kathy says, do you recommend the UV wands to kill virus on computers, phones, etc.? I have to look more into that. I know they're getting, I don't know if it's because I have, you know, written stuff here on YouTube, but I'm seeing ads pop up all the time. And I think two comments that were made on Friday about, you know, putting UV inside the body, <laughs> um, which is not advised. UV will burn and it will destroy the mucous membrane. So it's not healthy. Um, I have to look at it because I know, you know, it depends on what's the circulation. I do know, and I've looked at, there are um, glass cases, you know, or a, a case for your glasses that you can clean or, and even your, a case that cleans the phone. I've actually been in contact with one of those brands. Um, you know, these items are really popular and hot right now. And, you know, I want to make sure I do my research before as a consumer, first and foremost, um, because I only want to, buy items that are impactful. And I want to see research, especially, you know, when there are claims that are being made. Um, okay, so, so we've got the assault lamps. And then 
My last and final is aromatherapy. Uh, aromatherapy, you guys have, a lot of you have fallen in love with Guru Nanda. Um, I love, I love this brand. And let me see what happened. Oh, here it is. I love, I love their, um, I love the way they diffuse. So their diffusers are pretty spectacular. So in a home setting, we have plugs. In office settings, we have plugs. We also have USB ports. Plug in in the car. So we all have USB ports in the car. This is a diffuser you can use in the car, at home, and in your office setting. And really powerful. This little piece allows you to screw in the aromatherapy. So for instance, my favorite one that they have that right now they are not selling individual. I've checked on Amazon. That's why I bought the whole kit here. Um, but Immunity Blends, the one, it has oregano oil in it. This is and clove. So it's like thieves oil on steroids. But you, all you do is take the cap off and you screw it in. And it has, you, so you can plug it in. So this is a UB connector, USB connector. You plug it in, actually it goes this way. So you plug it in. And then when it's on, you click this switch and it's a uh, blue light. And this blue light, like every three or five minutes, a little spray mister of the aromatherapy gets in the air. Then you click it again and it goes to a green spray and that sprays a little bit more. It's very powerful. Uh, do those diffusers? No, actually. Okay. So this is really interesting. I was, I, so I, you, I have a lot of oils. We have commercial related oils we have for the clinic setting. I'm a huge fan of using oils. I use them in our bath. I mean, we, we go nuts with oils. Um, I don't use any fragrance. I, there's no, you know, Glade plugins. There's none of the like Febreze or anything like that. Pure essential oil. So I wondered, you know, would some of my other brands fit in here? And so let me take this off because I have several. All of my, you know, even I had one that was a bigger, um, bigger bottle. So this is, I think this is two fluid ounces. This is three fluid ounces. I had a four one. It fit in and it's still diffusing in Gabriel's room. They also have this. Huh? Isn't that pretty? This is just a more of kind of a, they call it their Honeycomb Ultrasonic. And um, you add a little water and it diffuses uh, the oil. So very similar to the one that I have on my, my back. But Guru Nanda, I love them. I will tell you, they did get hit by the FDA majorly. Like they were one of, I think, 12 companies that were made an example out of. Um, I don't know what product they were making claims for, but nothing has been proven in the medical and in the natural world to fight against the virus. But we have definitely things that help boost our immunity. We have things that clean the air. So we wanna employ all of those collectively to help us. But this is the, the combo blend. I actually have this other one here, huh, relaxation. I was using that the other day. Um, but they, they have, it, it's a really high quality product. Um, so this is the little kit that I, I think I have posted for you guys below. But they have a sleep one. Um, they have the immunity blend. They've got breathe easy, harmony, um, tranquility, and relaxation. So very, very nice brand here. Um, and so aromatherapy, you can diffuse in your homes, in your cars, and in your offices. And that would be something that I would consider as part of your catalog of when things get back to normal and we, you know, are all kind of in a phase where we're going back and starting to resume some of our activities of, you know, working in public or shopping in public. I do, and I'm curious how you guys feel about this, but sorry, my allergies are really, really bothering me. I did a several neti pot sinus things last yesterday, but we had a huge mold stack and I think we had some rain on it. And I think there was some uh, like mold particles that I'm gonna have to clear out. Um, so I'm curious, what are your thoughts about nor the new normal? So after this, like, does everybody feel like we're going to enter a world that is more reliant on technology that maybe we're having, you know, like for us, I really am enjoying the Instacart process. I am saving more money because I'm not stupid shopping. <laughs> and I'm one of those people I can spend you know, I could go into Target for two or three things and walk out with a full cart and $100. 
Um, and same with Aldi because I love perusing the Aldi finds and I'm not doing that. Um, so I'm curious if you guys feel like, um, you know, new normal is going to be, is going to look different. Um, so Marina says, has anybody tried oregano oil in the bottom of their feet? Curious. So if you do put oregano oil, um, okay. So there's different, there's oil of oregano. Um, and then there is oregano oil. Oil of oregano is the medicinal, uh, oil. That would be something you can internally take and you can, you know, take, you can use externally, if you use oil of oregano externally, you always want to have a carrier oil and you really want to be, if you, I always caution, never use alone. It's a hot oil and it can cause redness and even intense burning for some people. Um, it just depends on your sensitivity level, but you need to always blend with a carrier oil and like one drop goes a really long way. Um, you know, I will have my oil of oregano bottles for a year. And I mean, we use them frequently, but we're not using a whole lot of it. I mean, one drops, max three, if we're like dealing with anything. Um, Teresa says, I'm spending more money on your recommendations, LOL. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> in the future, I might still wear a mask on the airplane. Brenda, Kathleen. Um, yeah, definitely. Always, always use a carrier oil. So the mask is listed. So these guys, unfortunately, the, the company that was making these, the small little Etsy company, they are out. Um, I'm doing a reassessment today of all my Etsy friends. Um, and not, you know, some of them I know and others I'm now just a customer of like this shirt and others. I've, I've been really clear, like I'm going to buy your product and I might show it on a YouTube video and how's your inventory level? Like, can you handle a lot of, a lot of orders? And I ask before I send people their way for their sake and yours so you can actually get something I recommend. Um, but Sarah, she's who I recommend. Um, and I know her personally, you know, she's so fantastic. Family's awesome. She lost her job and this is her, she's always loved sewing. It's always her side gig. She's very artsy and she now is sewing masks full time and doing really a uh, great, a good job, fast delivery, lots of good reviews. Everybody's happy. Her um, fabric materials change. She even has cute um, spring ones. There's bunnies on there. So do check her out. I have her link down below. Um, Traditionally, people also use smudge sticks or natural incense as a bug repellent and to diffuse. Um, yeah, so smudge sticks are sage. I actually grow uh, Russian sage. I transplanted one. He's not looking fabulous, but um, I grow those and you can do smudge sticks. Um, it is an intense uh, smell and folks who have asthma sometimes don't do well with that. And you can't do that in an office setting. So, um, you know, in a home um, even, you know, salt bowls and things like that um, are helpful, helpful. So these masks, um, I have you, if you want these masks, DM me and I can connect you up to her, her Etsy store. Um, oh, Lori says, I got two of Sarah's masks and love them. Yay. And Powell says, Sarah's fantastic. Her masks are great. And she has the best customer service. Yeah, she's fantastic. Um, okay. Let's see, as someone who has an autoimmune disease, this is Nad Nadja, um, I'm looking forward to a new normal. The flu season has always been a scary time for me. I hope things will be cleaner. Yes, I, you know, I would say, I think if anything, places we frequent will be way more cognizant of cleaning. Um, I can't tell you, I, I stopped going to our fresh market because they would never have the sanitizing like wipes to wipe off the, um, you know, little shopping carts. And I've already been like a crazy person about that. Like I don't touch door handles. I've you know never touched the keypads and stuff like that. I just feel like those are icky anyway. But now, you know, we have a little bit more uh, cleaner process in case folks are on a budget, can't find products or have those things handy. Just thoughts in case you have ideas. I really don't know how to address that. So, you know, um, not all of these things are things you can make up at home or grow. Um, but I, you know, it's up to you all, um, you know, what your budget allows. I'm just going to keep giving you uh, free. This is all free. This video, <laughs> my time is free. You know, if you were to consult with me, it's a, a different fee that a lot of folks are not used to. I don't do, I don't carry or take insurance uh, because I'd have to employ a whole lot more people to handle that authorizing and collecting. 
Um, so, you know, I just, I don't know what to say to that, but, uh, just take what you can of it and, you know, pick and choose what you feel budgetarily you need. Um, you know, some people are fine sleep wise, others aren't stress wise. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know what to say to that. Um, Jenny from the block says, I love saging, but worry what neighbors think of the building. Yes. So that is a van point. She said, um, you know, is that Lee smoking pot? Ha ha ha. Yeah. So that actually was kind of my, where I was leaning with that sage. When you, um, when you sage, you get sage sticks. When you smudge, it's very intense. Um, and so that is, uh, that is something to be conscious of. And I had, you know, a wellness center and one of my hypnotherapists, um, she would, it's say, I mean, there were some cases that were pretty intense. And so she just cleaned the air. I mean, and we had the aromatherapy going, we had, you know, salt lamps and stuff, cleaning, you know, HEPA, UV filtration. Um, and I mean, it was intense. <laughs> and somebody was like, is she smoking pot in there? And it was funny, but it can be pretty intense. And so, you know, aromatherapy is more gentle. The other thing that's really great, especially in a work setting, is like, if I wanted the immunity blend, um, and I actually, I don't know if I posted it on this, but I will make sure I do. Um, Brian has gotten me necklaces that are diffusing necklaces and they're diffusing earrings. So they have these little like co cotton pads that, you know, come with a multitude of them. And you can, you can dab a little bit of the, the aromatherapy. So let's say you're in a cubicle and, you know, you're trying to social distance, but the reality is like you're all smushed in there. You could wear earrings, you know, for ladies, even then they have some uh, diffusing necklaces and they also have bracelets. So you could use those jewelry items and put drops and diffuse. The other thing is you could just, you know, depending on like oil, some of the oils like this has frankincense, it's yellow. I wouldn't put this on anybody's uh, clothing that they didn't want to have ruined. Um, but that's another thing you could possibly have, you know, even like for a woman in her bra, she could have like a little, um, you know, cotton hanky, uh, you know, a, a handkerchief or whatnot and kind of stuff in their bra and they could be diffusing. So, um, yeah. Okay. So Guru Nanda, yeah, Guru Nanda has those necklaces. Yeah, they're great. Um, so Darlene says, I think it go back to normal eventually. And that scares me. Um, I heard that do having, okay. So Cassandra, hi, Cassandra. I heard that due to having to stay home, our immunity is decreasing because we are not around germs or bacteria. Our body needs for immunity to get stronger. Do you believe this is true? It's a good question. Um, I think we're still early on in that. And to be honest with you, you know, like I reported yesterday, only 22 to 26% of people are actually staying home. So people are still out and about. And we do have our own families related kind of bacteria. We still have a lot of bacteria um, that we get exposed to. So I am, I think if this were to stay on for a year, Potentially, I have to look into that. Uh, I'm going to make a little note of that. I haven't seen any research on um, decreased immunity, but you know, again, like probiotics, keeping your gut healthy can be helpful at that. Um, let's see, uh, Jody Fro, I received my UV uh, to phone disinfectant on one on one before all this started. If I only took the plunge. Yeah, um, that's good. An immunity inhaler. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Um, so my cookie, I think you guys are asking about my cookie recipe. I meant to post that to YouTube yesterday and I, I didn't, I was outside pretty much all day. It was so great. And I have added a few more bird feeders. I've been completely cleaned out of one. I got this really great nut and fruit mix and our chipmunk has been loading up his cheeks and running off and then coming back and so he is stockpiling and I'm going to have to issue some <laughs> visit quantities on that little sucker. Um, okay, so what would you suggest for a 60 plus meal for magnesium chelated L threonate? How much? 40 milligrams. So it's actually um, about 40 MCGs is what the daily requirement is for a gentleman. Um, but always test your magnesium. If you're in a deficiency, you would need more. Um, Okay, so let's see. YouTube, Instagram, you guys are are um, uh, going off in about forty seconds, and um, 
So what I promise I will be doing, I'll be putting kind of together all of this stuff in a downloadable, but please do. There's a free download and I'm going to grab two lucky winners. Let me scroll. Darlene Malone. Darlene, I'm going to send you my email and let's see here. We've got uh, Gwinnett Danny. Gwinnett Danny, DM me your um, mailing address. You are going to get one of the Hansies wipes. So these are uh, really kind of a neat cleaning process. So DM me by Instagram. Our Instagram just came off. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I'm not going to re-up re them because we're almost done. Okay, so let me add in my email. And uh, mail here seems to take forever. So don't be surprised if it takes a few weeks to get to you for some crazy reason. Um, it seems like unless it goes like first class. Why is it not saving that? Okay, share to story. Okay, so unless it goes first class, it seems like it takes forever. Um, okay, so pansies for uh, Darlene. Um, let's see, Darlene, what's your last name? Mm -hmm. Darlene Malone. Okay, all right. So I'll look for your email. The pansies wipes. These are great. And seriously, like it does a good job of cleaning. Like I have this here, it's still wet. And so you could also use this. It's, it's safe enough too for kiddos. Um, but okay, friends. So do check out the links down below. Please give me a thumbs up on this video. That totally helps. Hit the share button. YouTube's still taking over 24 hours to upload this. So you might not see it hit my profile. Um, but I will share this to the community tab. So for any of the other lives that you can't find, the community tab will have it. Um, I'll add some additional links. I think I might've missed a few that we talked about. And um, yeah, Pat, the chipmunks are super cute, super fast, and they are hoarders. So um, yeah, they, they're always preparing for a pandemic. <laughs> um, all right, friends, thanks so much for tuning in. So Darlene, congratulations on winning the Hansies cleaning wipes and uh, do consider definitely the pole socks the mask. My friend Sarah does a fantastic job with these. You won't be disappointed. And um, I'll start to populate these on the website today, these um, filters, the carbon filters. So I'll put those out to you. They won't be advertised other than to all of you. So you guys will have uh, dibs at this. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. See you later. And thanks, Pat and Ron, for wonderful moderating. We're grateful. All right, everybody. Have a good, happy Monday. See you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Bye.